6 cores and 12 threads for $119 on 12th generation Intel. This right here in my hand is an engineering sample that I picked up from AliExpress and it took about a week to get shipped to my door. So this was very quick in terms of international shipping, but I wanted to know, was this CPU at its current price point going to be the new value king for people who are either building a new PC or even people who want to say reflip a gaming PC and want to save a few bucks and still get very similar performance to an i5-12400? Is this going to be the CPU that can do it? And in today's video, we're going to test out all the gaming performance as well as throw in some other benchmarks for you. But in a nutshell, this CPU unfortunately has too many negatives for me to be recommending it here today. So let's get on with how this CPU just goes from bad to worse, depending on the situation you are using it for. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and the first biggest problem, we'll get this out of the way with because this is gonna be the reason I'm not recommending this CPU and that is because it doesn't detect a graphics card on the first PCI X16 slot, that's the Gen 4 slot that's connected to your CPU's PCIe bus. And the reason for this is that I think Intel have deliberately disabled this on engineering samples going forward as to make them not appeal to the PC gaming community, as opposed to in the past when I've tested out some engineering samples, they have actually been really good buys and they can represent really good value for money. But this was not to be the case where if you want to get this CPU to work, if you're a PC gamer, you will have to find a motherboard that has a PCI Express 16X slot that runs through the chipset hub and then that will be able to detect your graphics card and you can use that for PC gaming. However, the problem with doing this and at least in my past experiences, was that you will get significantly reduced performance, especially if you're coupling it with a higher end GPU. And so in today's results, we will be using an RTX 3080 and we'll be testing at 1080p ultra and low settings. And I did have to test this across a few different motherboards to validate that this was indeed the problem. The two other issues that I found with this CPU was XMP, four sticks of DDR4 memory, 3600 megahertz. It's worked with every retail 12th gen CPU I've tested it with to date, except on this CPU, I can only get 3200 megahertz on four sticks, even though two sticks at 3600 megahertz worked fine. So that would lead me to believe that the IMC is just simply weaker on the engineering sample, at least this i5-12400 ES than the regular samples that hit the retail shelves. Then there's the clock speeds, and here's where you're gonna get a four gigahertz single core boost and 3.6 gigahertz all cores. This is down from the 4.4 and then four gigahertz all cores on the retail 12400. Though, let's pull up some gaming numbers where things go from bad to worse, depending on the settings and the title you are playing with. So what we've got here is six different games that we tested with that RTX 3080 and we tested with DDR4 memory. And what we could see here is we'll go through the total war numbers where we were getting significantly lower FPS than even the Ryzen 5 5500, which on AliExpress at this point in time is a 110 US dollars ship. So it's coming in at a cheaper price. And of course there are much better positives to all these three other CPUs in the graph, which we'll get onto later. Then we saw the low numbers, 252 average FPS, then Ultra 126, going over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is where I actually had to do even more testing because I did the power consumption results as well as retesting the uh, CPU with a different CPU cooler because in this title at 1080p lower settings, what I saw here was initially I got this 165 average FPS but then I noticed the CPU was going to near 100 degrees and the power consumption during this benchmark on this CPU was at one point in time going over 100 watts, which is the highest power consumption I've seen for a CPU done in this test with an RTX 3080 to date. Now that's probably got to do with it running the graphics card through the PCI chipset hub and of course the CPU just being not as an efficient piece of silicon as say a retail i5-12400. But when we stepped it up to ultra settings, we had 128 average FPS. 
and the minimums were lower than all the other three CPUs. Though this is where I did the power consumption results with the water cooler. So we're kind of cheating in favor of the Enjo sample, but it still managed just to shy under 70 watts. And that's coming in with significantly more power draw than all the other three CPUs that we used in this comparison. So bottom line is for gaming, this thing is an absolute slug because it's having to go through the chipset hub rather than going directly to the CPU. And this is causing some big issues with FPS, but it's also throwing the numbers out to the point where you're gonna have to go out and get an aftermarket cooler in my opinion, because this thing just starts to ramp up in terms of power consumption. They're going over to Fortnite, here's where we had 207 average FPS, and then going to Epic settings, we had 104 average FPS. The 1% and 0.1% lows were okay in correlation to where the average FPS sat. But again, you're just leaving free performance on the table, especially when you've got a $110 Ryzen 5 5500 sitting there in these benchmarks. The one to Far Cry 6, 114 average FPS, and then we had 90 average FPS at ultra settings. They're going to the last title here was Ghost Recon via the Vulcan API. And here's where the Enjo sample did its best in today's comparison, followed with the next game that we'll also pull up here. And that is Valorant, where we tested at 1080p highest settings and lowest settings, which actually didn't make a difference with those highest and lowest settings. It was still giving out lower FPS than the other three CPUs. So with those gaming numbers aside, it's now verdict time with this i5-12400 Enjo sample. And this thing is just simply an absolute slug. I'm not gonna be recommending this to anyone at all because of a few various points. The first being the gaming performance is really bad when we compare it to all the other CPUs in today's comparison. One of those CPUs, of course, even being able to be had at a cheaper price on AliExpress than the i5-12400ES right here. The second problem is the compatibility. I went through various different boards, even for instance, testing out the ProRS B660 from ASRock. It would initially display a signal from the iGPU, but then inserting it into other slots on the motherboard would still not give out a signal. So again, if the slots are connected to the CPU directly, they're not going to give out a signal for this CPU in terms of your dedicated graphics card. But if you are using the chipset hub, the PCIe slot connected to that, like in the case of the Prime B660 that we used here, we also did test it on a Z690 with DDR5 on the bottom slot and that worked as well. Then you are going to be able to get reduced performance compared to what the other CPUs can do. And the funny thing about these results here today was I was running the graphics card at PCI Gen 4 X4. So maybe some of the ultra results were due to that limitation in itself, but of course the increased latency of going through the chipset hub versus the PCI bus on the CPU itself. But if you're wondering if it's just Intel disabling, say for instance, the PCI Gen 4 X16 on the CPU, that's not the case because our M.2 still worked absolutely fine. And so in the case of Intel shutting down engineering samples, they are now getting onto that with this 12400, meaning they don't want anyone in the public to be using these as a value choice, as opposed to in previous generations, you could definitely get some engineering samples and you could get some really good value out of them, as we said before. And in this case, you can't really get upset or angry at Intel for doing this because engineering samples are just that, they're meant to be sent out for either board partners to validate results, clock speeds, and all sorts of other tests. And they're not meant to really find their way into hands of value hunters like myself. So, But I guess it is a little bit surprising to see that the gaming functionality has been brought down to its knees with this Enjo sample. Though the last thing I'm gonna point out is the power consumption results. Say for instance, there's someone out there that just wants to use this in a NAS, or they want a 12th gen, headless operation or they want the iGPU, they don't need the dedicated graphics card, then in that case, we've got to look at the quality of silicon you're getting with this engineering sample. And in fact, this goes hand in hand with my upcoming undervolting tutorial on 12th gen CPUs, where I've been scratching my head at the variance between the silicon, the quality of silicon on 12th gen, where you can have an i9-12900K undervolt like an absolute boss, meaning you can drop that power consumption tremendously. Then you go to an i5-12400 and you're dropping it by 15 watts and you have to drop your performance a little bit in order to get those results. So it seems like this 
CPU right here actually validates that Intel have really gone to lengths with the binning of their silicon on 12th gen. And in fact, the reason why 12th gen was so delayed, Alder Lake was so delayed, was I believe they had a lot of problems with yields in the fact that they couldn't get the high performance desktop chips at the levels that they needed to ship them at. And this relates perfectly to the reasons why we've seen such big delays in Intel's seven nanometer, well, it's actually 10 nanometer, but they're calling it Intel seven for desktop enthusiasts because they had a lot of trouble getting those higher clock speeds at the performance and the wattage settings that they desired, or at least that the customer would be happy with because this all relates back to having a high performance CPU, but having to drop the power consumption down. So say for instance, the end user doesn't have to go out and get a massive power supply or go out and get a massive cooler, especially if they're buying a budget CPU like the i3-12100, for example. So the yields on these CPUs really did open my eyes to the point where there's so much more variance in the quality of silicon that's released to the desktop users versus what has been released in the past. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the AliExpress i5-12400 engineering sample. I'm actually gonna be trying to return this as they did say free returns and I'm really not happy with this CPU. And at least when I first bought it, there was not that disclaimer in the uh, description saying that you had to use another PCI Express graphics slot. Because as soon as I read that, when I went back to go check the listing, I realized, okay, they're running it through the chipset hub, which even in their own listing to this date, they're still misleading the customer saying, oh, the second slot might work. Well, the second slot is running to the CPU just like the first slot, then your Gravis card output is still not going to work properly with this engineering sample. So what they mean to say is, well, you've got to use a PCI Express slot that's running through the chipset hub and you will get significantly reduced gaming performance because of this. And so this is the biggest reason why I can't recommend this. Though that then leads way to the question of, well, what if another universe, there was Intel and they didn't disable the PCIe Gen 4 graphics card detection on their engineering samples. Well, you could have had a $119 12th Gen 6 core 12 threaded meta CPU to hit the markets, but didn't happen in this universe, fellas. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you have any questions or comments about this engineering sample, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Okami and they ask, so when can I get a 3090 for $1 XD? I need to run Star Citizen. Uh, so this has sort of got two uh, points that are just completely out of this planet. First thing is the $1 3090. You're never going to see that on a retail shelf. The second thing is Star Citizen, the final release. You're probably never going to see that either. Anyhow, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stay this far and you're enjoying that tech. Yes, content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.